Hello and welcome. Before Top Gun, American actress Kelly McGillis caught the eye of movie fans worldwide starring opposite Harrison Ford in Peter Weir's romantic thriller Witness. Now, while Kelly had won plaudits for her part in the 1983 film Reuben Reuben with Tom Conti, it was her role as a young Amish mum whose son witnesses a murder that really attracted the attention of Hollywood producers. While Witness won two Oscars for Best Original Screenplay and Editing and six other nominations, including Best Actor for Harrison, Kelly missed out. But film critics were full of praise for her nuanced performance and she went on to garner both Golden Globe and BAFTA Best Actress nominations. Now, I sat down with Kelly long before all of the awards events and not long after the film screening at the Cannes Film Festival. She talked about her extensive research into the Amish community, including living on an Amish farm, working with Australian director Peter Weir, and whether she was satisfied with the outcome of the film. Yes, actually, um, I, th I think it more than satisfied me in the sense that I think it's sort of um, a, a terrific old-fashioned movie. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Um, which was far more than I expected it to be. I either saw it either going all one way or all another way, and it, it, that Peter was able to make it such a blend of so many different things, I find very interesting and fascinating. And I'm never bored every time I watch it. I always find something new, and I go, oh, God, that's really terrific mm. how he did that. You know, and it's interesting. I've seen it probably now 15 times, and I 15? still... Yeah. yeah. I've seen it twice, and uh, and I love it. I think it's just everything about it. I mean, it's the a very old-fashioned movie in the oh, sense yeah. that it's got everything in it for everybody. It's mm. got romance, it's got a little bit of violence, it's got mm. an interesting story, it passes on in interesting information, and it's got some symbolism mixed in there and things, which I really like. I, yes, I like oh, it. Yeah. the layers of it are amazing. So it, it's no surprise to you that it went to be your number one box office hit in, in the States? Yeah, I was a little bit shocked. I mean, happy. Happily so. But, but shocked. Why were you shocked? <sighs> because never in my wildest dreams did I think that my second movie would be as big as that. And that's big. You know, that's number one, that's big. <laughs> and I, I feel like such a newcomer and such a kid. Mm -hmm. how, how big was Reuben, uh, Reuben in the States? It wasn't a very big film. It was, I think one would classify it more as an art film, you know, only released in, in, in major cities. But critically acclaimed? Yeah, it, it, it did get good reviews. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't seen by masses of people. So it was ex exceptionally well reviewed in Australia, and I think it did very, very good business mm -hmm. in that country. I mean, it, it, it rose above being just uh, art house. Uh, yeah, in New York, it, it never sort of broke out of that. You know, there's a certain culture for mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, a, it's sort of an occult <laughs> now. Did you, after Reuben Reuben, did you get a number of other offers to do films and, and you chose Witness because it was the most interesting or was it the first offer you got? What happened? I had some offers, you know, things for that I didn't really want to do. Um, I, you know, as it goes, I would like to be able to play a wide variety of people and too many of them were just like the character that I had played mm. in Reuben Reuben. And when Peter asked to meet me for a Witness, I hadn't read the script yet. Because <laughs> like so many other things, you never think that anything will become of it. You know, mm -hmm. you, oh yeah, right, okay. And and then I, when I read the script, I really, really was enthralled with doing it. And after meeting with Peter, I thought, it's so terrific. I'm Peter Weir. <laughs> you know, I think I love his work, and, and I'm glad it all worked out. What films of his had you seen beforehand? I've seen uh, Gallipoli. Year of Living Dangerously. Um, 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 picnic um, at Hanging Rock. Yeah, Picnic at Hanging Rock. The Last Wave. Last Wave I've never seen. At what stage was it clear that Harrison Ford was going to be uh, on, in the opposite row? Well, I, I believe it was clear from the beginning of the project. It wasn't clear to me until after my screen test. 
They didn't tell you. No, I no. I don't think I was even caring at that point. It was just if I got through that, you know, it, it's always such a tremendous pressure. Doing a test is in such mm -hmm. uh, forced circumstances. You're in a room with none of the real people that you would be doing it with. Most of them are usually not actors. Ed Feldman played Stoltzfus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a very awkward situation and, and and doing a dialect that I'd never heard before because I couldn't find a tape of it anywhere. I was doing a German dialect. Um, it, it was a very forced situation and I just thought, well, if I can get through this, it'll be great. <laughs> and that's all I was, you know, really concerned about is hopefully getting the job, which happened. Did Peter tell you, tell you why he picked you? No, I mean, I've heard since, but not at the time. He told me the other night it was because I was smoking and drinking coffee dressed in Amish clothes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. What, what was his real... Did he give you a real explanation or that was it? Something about um, an, an, an interesting mixture of innocence and not innocence. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What is not innocence? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it's sort of, um, you know. Wickedness, did he mean? No, he didn't say wickedness, just just the, the, the juxtaposition of the two people within myself. But it's very hard to talk about because it's me and I'm not aware that I am that way. But I guess... But so, and what other people see in, in your face and your personality, obviously? I, you, what Peter sees in it, certainly. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm that way, though. <laughs> I don't know. What about the, um, you did, um, I understand, a reasonable amount of research on the Amish people. Mm -hmm. what, what, how did you go about it? Where did you begin? And did you actually get to meet and talk with Amish people? Mm -hmm. I began by reading a book, um, and Peter and I watched a movie that were made um, of the Amish, you know, photographing them, which is bad. How do you mean bad? Well, it's not, they don't like to be photographed. No. It just made me feel guilty after I knew about them that I was watching a movie made of them. <laughs> when you say um, a movie, you mean? A movie, a short little fi film about the Amish, a very short movie. And then I went down to Lancaster and um, I had to start taping people's dialects and finding people who would talk to me, who would translate things for me into Dutch. They have Pennsylvania Dutch dictionaries, but they aren't really Pennsylvania Dutch because it's such a bastardized form of the German language that it's impossible to find a proper translation. Plus, within each district, uh, they speak, you know, they have different words for the same thing. Mm. So, and because most of them don't really write or read very well, it's, it just becomes a mishmash of so many different things. So I had to learn that. I had to learn a dialect. I, I also um, learned children's rhymes and stories and things like that to share with Lucas. Mm -hmm. And he and I would work on you know, songs together and small things like that. And uh, I had to learn music for uh, from for scenes that were never in the movie. Eventually, you know, but, right. um, things which aren't scripted. I mean, none of their music is scripted. So I had to find people who would sing for me in a tape recorder, mm. who are ex Amish people. Um, and and that's all different too because it's all sung through a leader. And then I got to live with a widow and her seven children for a few days uh -huh. and work on their farm and, and I planted potatoes it was my first night there with a mule. <laughs> it was very hard to get your rows straight, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and I, I seeded alfalfa and I milked the cows and did all that thing. You know. What were they like? What, 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 did they welcome you or were they wary of you? Or what? No, they were very nice to me. She knew that I was the actress in the movie and there was some you know, hesitancy about people being involved. But I think Mary is more like Rachel. She's a little bit rebellious <laughs> in the sense of, you know, that's her life. But she also is very interested in everything outside of that. She was very funny. She'd always ask me about the ocean. And I told her that I grew up on an island. She was surprised that you, she wanted to know about the ocean, you were saying. Yeah, she was just fascinated that somebody could live in the middle of the water. And she didn't always said she wanted to see the ocean. And, and never seen the ocean. And people that Peter and Wendy would meet, they'd say they lived in Australia and they'd run out with mat, with globes and say, point out where Australia is. And they're very fascinated. 
It's, um, you know, in talking about where I lived in New York, she couldn't believe that there were just little sections of ground cordoned off for people to, you know, enjoy Earth. And she, you know, she couldn't believe that there was so much cement. So she like never that. left Lancaster County? No, she hadn't. You know, many, many Amish people do, but, um, you know, they go on day trips to the beach mm. and things like that. Actually, a great many of them go to Canada for a hospital up there. So did she eventually ever get a chance to see the movie? Because they don't have movies. They don't go to movies. Do no, they? they will never go see the movie. I mean, I'm sure the two boys, her two homeless <laughs> boys are a little, I mean, the boys, you know. Kids will still be kids, no matter mm. who they are. They may go sneak in and see it once, but I don't think that you know, she will. So, so did you get any community resistance to the fact that you were this strange, sort of strange creature, an actress, coming in here to try and? Not really. I mean, I think that there was some um, some hoopla made by one person who is a self appointed spokesperson for them, but I, I don't think it was generally how the people felt. You know, I felt always that people were very fascinated and interested, actually. And they'd quit working their land and come over and look at the camera and talk to us and sort of point. And it was, it was very interesting. It was, I don't think that we personally got any negative feelings mm. from them. Because Peter said there was always a temptation when in the, in the distance of a shot, you, uh, or, or nearby, you would see the Amish farmers working in the fields or walking back or, you know, the horse and cart going down the road to shoot it. Mm. And he had to resist that. Yeah. Very strongly. Yeah. Was it hard for you to get into the role, Rachel? How did you find that? Mm. I think, um, I don't know. I, I don't think that it was, um, really that hard in the sense that, um, we all have different people within us, you know. I mean, her innocent side, I have a lot of, there's a lot of things that, just my life experience and my lack of innocence thereof, of, you know, living in New York City and seeing things, I had to really concentrate on the innocence far more than I had to do anything else. I, um, I think the hardest thing to do, though, is to, to become unmodern uh, in, in the form of movement, how carriage, you know, I mean, today I walk around in jeans and, you know, sit any way I want to, <laughs> you know, to really, and, and to make an absolute physical transformation as well as voice and dialect that, um, that I had to, that took most of my effort. You know, the acting was, was very easy because I always had Peter to talk to about that that there were certain physical things that I didn't necessarily have anybody to talk to and choices, you know. I mean, you could do anything, <laughs> basically. How, how was he as a director compared to uh, that of Robert Robert? Peter was very different. I mean, it was a whole different way of working, and Peter and I really talked about far more my acting technique for film and where I wanted to go and what my personal problems were in acting for film, and what he felt they were, and what I felt they were. And so it was a very different situation for me. So, but how was it different? What was uh, Miller like? It wasn't uh, such a personal communication in that sense, and, and um, not... Um, Peter taught me a great deal about myself and how I wanted to work and what what I think and he thinks are fine moments on film. Mm. You know, and how well, between the two of you, I think you certainly got some good ones. Yeah, I, I like some of them. I mean, I'm amazed that they're there. Sometimes I think, wow, it's really the moment. So, you mm. know, some of them, you know, in this movie there's some, and then the next one hopefully there'll be some more. And Have you done a movie since we No. No. <laughs> Do you know which the next one is going to be? Um, I thought so. It now doesn't appear to be so, so now I don't know. So you can tell us anything at all about your future? Uh, right at this hour? <laughs> no. <laughs> perhaps tomorrow? Uh, perhaps in a few hours, maybe, but right now, no. 
When you smiled when you said that you hadn't done one since witness, was that because there'd been opportunities that, that either you didn't like or they fell through or you just have been too busy? Well, one, I did a play, which I really wanted to do. I wanted to do a play. Um, I, and I, I uh, have turned down some offers. I'm the right one, and the right one that I wanted to do is not going to go. So it's, you know, but I mean, I was involved, and mm. that's just the way the cookie crumbles That's not, wasn't the two Jakes, was it? Yeah. So, I mean, there were internal problems that I have no idea about. I heard today that there is a chance that it may go in another way. I don't know what that meant. I have no idea. I mean, I'm sitting here literally not knowing, so yeah. I cannot make any comment. Well, Roger Ebert, you know, the movie critic from the Chicago Sun-Times, mm -hmm. he apparently knows something about it. In fact, he seems to know quite a bit about it, but he wasn't Everybody exactly letting on. Everybody seems to know quite a bit about it, but I really don't know how much of anybody really knows the real story because mm. I don't even know, and I'm cast. Right. You know, I don't... I hear one day it's going and the next day it's not going, so I have no idea. Mm. And that's just sort of the way movies are. <laughs> but you like the trade, though. Do I like it? I wouldn't do anything else. But did you intend to do this? Well, I intended always to act. Um, but you, 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 were you at Juilliard, were you? Yeah, I was at Juilliard. Doing music? No acting. Dra just drama? Yeah, right. just acting. I didn't even make it to academic classes. Because <laughs> right. I just remember reading or... Uh, no, no, I, tell you, I, I spoke to um, uh, Julia... Ju uh, Epstein, Julius Epstein. Oh, yes. Oh, great uh, Yes, wonderful. Fantastic man. And, uh, and he told me that you... You were sort of virtually plucked out of classes, and, and they flew you at weekends down to shoot. Yeah, I never intended to be a movie star. If that's what, you know, when I say people go, "Well, you're a movie star," I just all I wanted to do was work. And I tell you, I thought how it would all happen. I had it in my head, this nice, concise little plan of I'd graduate from school, I would do some regional theater, and then maybe I'd do some soap opera work. And then I would get a small part in a film, and then it would gradually get to bigger parts. And all of a sudden, in the middle of my last year, I had met on Reuben Reuben, and they offered me the role. And I was just casting Congreve's Love for Love, and I said, I can't possibly do that. I mean, I have to graduate from school, and I just got this lead in this play. And, and they all looked at me, and they said, what, you're turning down a movie, a leading role with Tom Conte to graduate from school? <laughs> And it was this very big issue that I wouldn't leave school, but I've never graduated from anything in my life, and it was very important for me to graduate. So I... Um, they you mean you didn't together. graduate from high school? No, I left. I hated high school. <laughs> I hated school. <laughs> they made me take social studies and science and things I never had any interest in. Well, what were you like at school, then? Were you sort of a bit of a tomboy? And, uh... No, I was very fat. I mean, I had 210 pounds, so nobody... What? I was very heavy in high school. Um, and, and, I mean, I just didn't want to do anything but act. How did you lose so. 210 pounds? Yeah. Well, I have a weight problem, obviously. <laughs> I mean, it's very easy for me to be fat. I can witness. I mean, I've been dieting now, you know, a lot to lose the weight. But how did, how did you go from 210? Actually, how I went was I just stopped eating. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's behavior. <laughs> yeah, you got a sweet tooth, have you? No, it's, it's, it's anxiety, I think, it does a lot of it for me. You know, when I'm anxious, I eat. So She's got no reason to be anxious anymore. As you say, sitting there, I mean, we're just discussing my job. I don't know if I have a job. So I don't know. You'll have one. Kelly is still working in the film and television industries, though most of her roles have been in telly movies and TV episodes. Memorably, she appeared opposite Jodie Foster in an Oscar-winning performance in the crime thriller The Accused in 1988. Kelly has two daughters and stepped away from the industry to open a restaurant in Florida. She turns 67 this year.